For this problem, we have two trains that are moving toward each other and trying to come to a stop before they collide. So for our sketch, we have our red train that's going in this direction with its initial velocity. And we have a green train that is going in that direction with its initial velocity. We're going to call this this point where the red train is 0 and this point where the green train is 950 because it says they start slowing down once they get within 950 meters of each other and we're going to call the positive direction that way so here you can see we're going to have a positive velocity for the red train and a negative velocity for the green train so out in our givens, we have the velocity initial for the red train, which is 72 kilometers per hour. The initial velocity for the green train, which is 144 kilometers per hour and we have the acceleration of the red train and the acceleration of the green train the acceleration of the red train is going to be in that direction because it's trying to bring the train to a stop so that means that that has a negative acceleration because whenever acceleration is in the opposite direction of velocity it's slowing it down on the green train, however, the acceleration is going to be going in the positive direction, just to go against the velocity. And first off, we're going to run into a problem here because we have kilometers per hour and meters per second squared. So we need to convert the velocities into meters per second. So if we do our dimensional analysis, we have 72 kilometers per hour for every one kilometer, 1,000 meters, and then one hour, 60 minutes, one minute, 60 seconds. And that brings us to 20 meters per second as the velocity for the red train. And I think you guys have done this enough that you can figure it out for the green train but if you look at it actually the green train is going at double of double the velocity of the red train so the velocity of the green train is just 40 meters per second that's actually a negative velocity because it's going in the opposite direction all right our unknown for each of these trains is the change in x that it experiences as it's slowing to a stop. So we could actually say that the final velocity is zero meters per second for both of these. What we're going to end up doing is we find the distance that each train travels um, as it's slowing to a stop and we're going to just subtract those distances from 950 meters and find either if they collide, if it's a negative number, or um, if they don't collide, what the distance between them is. So the equation we're going to use, we have final velocity, which is zero, and we have the initial velocity and the acceleration. We're trying to find the change in x. So what we can use is velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in x. For both of these, for the working equation, we've got velocity final squared minus velocity initial squared divided by 2 times the acceleration for the change in x. So when we substitute in, and this is going to be for the red train, we have 0 meters per second squared minus 20 meters per second squared divided by 
2 times negative 2 meters per second squared. So when we end up solving this, what we're going to find for the change in x for the red train as it's slowing to a stop is 100 meters because it's just negative 400 divided by negative 4 for 100 meters. Then for the green train we have 0 meters per second squared minus and this is going to be negative so minus negative 40 meters per second and that's squared. However, since we're squaring that, this will end up becoming positive, so the negative here doesn't really matter all that much. Divided by, and that's a really crooked line, that. It's a positive acceleration because it's slowing down. And what we find for this is the change in x for the green train is, and it's going to be a negative number, it's going to be negative 400 meters, but all that's basically telling us is it moves 400 meters from here to there as 400 meters. So if we look at this, we see that the total distance that both trains travel are 500 meters toward each other which is less than the 950 meters that separated them. So for our final solution, all we have to do is take 950 meters minus 100 meters, so that's 850 meters, minus 400 meters. And I know I'm just completely ignoring the negative sign that's just signifying direction in this case. And since they're moving toward each other, it doesn't really matter because we're just trying to find the distance between them. So what we're left with as our final solution is 450 meters between the two trains. And now we're just going to do the last problem, question number 10. In question number 10, we're given an intersection and told to find a couple of different pieces of information for it. Now, first off, it, it asks us to find the minimum safe stopping distance, the go zone, and the dilemma zone. And I'm just going to talk about what each of those are really quick. And the way that I'm going to be working this problem might be a little different from how your teacher is going to ask you to. At least for my teacher, the way that we were working in this problem was from right when you enter the intersection as long as you can get part of your car across this line and into the intersection, you're considered to be legally making the light and you're not running a red light or anything. So this is to calculate how far you can go after a yellow light comes on, if you can stop, any of that stuff. So while some teachers, they might have you say, okay, can I make it all the way through the intersection? at least for us because this is how my teacher did it we're just going to get into the intersection so what's going to happen is our minimum safe stopping distance is how far we have to be out in order to when we put on the brakes make it just to the line and not go over it and one thing we're going to have to take into account for this is our reaction time and we're just going to say that the standard reaction time the standard reaction time is half a second so that's the time between when you see the light turn yellow and when you put your foot on the brake so this is going to be our basically our braking distance we have our go zone where if you continue at the current velocity you're going at, you'll make it into the intersection. And if there is a dilemma zone, then that means that the minimum safe stopping distance is longer than the go zone. So, if we were to, say, draw out our different zones, if we were to have, say, our go zone, here 
and our minimum safe stopping distance was out here, that means if you were anywhere in this spot, you wouldn't have time to make it through the intersection, but you wouldn't be able to stop your car. So it, that's why it's called the dilemma zone. However, if it's a well-designed intersection, the minimum safe stopping distance will actually be less than the go zone. And so then any overlap is just called the overlap zone because you can stop safely or you can continue going. All right, so what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to say that the time that a yellow light is going is four seconds, okay? So a yellow light is on for four seconds, and normally what they do is for every 10 miles per hour on a road, they add a second. So this road is a 40 mile per hour road. And what we're actually going to do is convert that into meters per second because that's what we're used to working with. So the conversion factor for miles to kilometers is 1.61. And so what we're what we end up doing is uh, we get that into kilometers, which is 64.4 kilometers per hour. And now we need to convert that into meters per second. So I, I would let you guys do the dimensional analysis. I think you've seen it enough. And what we find as the velocity of the car is 17.88 meters per second. Now we're going to say that a car can, the brakes on a car can give it a negative acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So if this is the positive direction, it's going this way, the acceleration is going that way to make it stop. So what we're going to do from here is first off we're going to find the go zone and in order to do that, all we have to do is plug the velocity into a into the equation from the first unit since you're going to say you're continuing at the same velocity through the intersection. So we have change in x is equal to the velocity times the change in time. And in all these problems, we're solving for the change in x. So for our substitution, we have change in x is equal to 17.88 meters per second times 4 seconds that the light is on. And what we get for our go zone is 71.52 meters. All right. What we need to do now is find the minimum safe stopping distance. And to do that, first we're going to do our uh, reaction time. So we know that um, we're going to use the same equation that we used in the go zone. So we have change in x is equal to 17.88 meters per second times the 0.5 seconds that it takes for you to put your foot on the brake. So what that means is that the distance that we travel during our reaction time is 8.94 meters. And so for our minimum safe stopping distance, it's going to be 8.94 meters plus, and now we need to find the braking distance. And for this, we're going to use the same equation that we used in the last problem, which is velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in x. Normally, whenever you know that an object is slowing to a stop, you have its acceleration and you need to find the distance, this is the equation for you. So when we plug everything in, we know that this is actually going to be zero. So we can either leave it out or just know that it's going to disappear. So for our working equation, we have that. 
so once we substitute everything in, so it's negative 17.88 meters per second squared divided by 2 times negative 2 meters per second squared. The answer that we get for that, for the breaking distance, is 79.9236 meters. When we add those together, what we get for our minimum safe stopping distance is 88.8636 meters. And when you look at this, the go zone is less than the minimum safe stopping distance. So if we were to, say, draw out another intersection, we have our go zone out here at 71.52 meters. But out here, we have our minimum safe stopping distance, which is 88.8, I'll just put 0.86 meters. So what we need to do to find this dilemma zone is we take the large number and just subtract the smaller number out. So we have 88.86 meters minus 71.52 meters, and that gives us a dilemma zone of 17.34 meters. Those are our answers for this problem. Once again, your teacher might tell you to do something different. If that's the case, go for it. This is just to show you kind of the basic way to work those problems. I hope that this tutorial has helped you guys out in trying to learn how to do these problems. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just send us an email or fill out the form on our website. And so until next time, this is Brandon.